breaking news. If it bleeds, it leads. In your news today... You are now tuned in to Dirty Laundry Media. Stand by. Dirty Laundry Media on the check-in. This is your man online, Bill Money, coming back at you with another video. Thanks for tuning in to the channel. Um, just a brief follow-up on the previous story that I posted uh, regarding um, the $10 million that was set aside for Asian Americans in New York. Um, juxtaposed against the program that was set aside in Oregon uh, for black business owners who were affected by COVID-19. Um, and was challenged uh, with a lawsuit uh, from an Oregonian Hispanic woman um, who claimed successfully that the program was unconstitutional. Um, so I want to take a quick look back at this story. Um, here's the headline, Oregon settles with Hispanic business owner who sued over COVID fund exclusive to black residents. Um, briefly, let's recap. Um, a Hispanic business owner who sued Oregon for blocking her from the state's COVID-19 relief fund exclusively for black business owners will be getting a payout after all as the state agreed this week to settle the lawsuit over their race-based program. Uh, Marsha Garcia, who owns Revolution Coffee House in Portland, sued Oregon last year over its Oregon Cares Fund for which the state legislature dedicated $62 million from the Federal CARES Act towards grants that were only eligible to black Oregonians. Um, Garcia claims the fund is unconstitutional because it is based on race. So as I thought about it, I was like, well, let me take a look at Oregon and see if there are any policies or programs on the books that are specific to anyone group of people and lo and behold um, I came across this program here the Latino slash A slash X and indigenous student success plan so this was signed into law of May 2019 um, and it's called the student success act Oregon house bill 3427 um, and it was described as a historic opportunity to Oregon schools or for Oregon schools. Um, the bill makes significant investments in programs to support historically underserved students. Um, in this case, those students being um, Latino and indigenous. And we'll get into some of the definitions in a moment. Um, so you can see who all is included in this program and who's excluded. So they say when fully implemented, this act will invest approximately $2 billion per biennium uh, for early learning and K-12 education. Um, the Student Success Act marks a turning point for education in Oregon. Um, again, when fully implemented, our state will see an additional $1 billion investment in education each year. And offers this offers a new opportunity to improve outcomes for students who have historically um, been underserved by our system. So again, this is for the Latino, AX, and indigenous communities in Oregon specifically. And I was wondering what the definitions um, were to just see specifically who this program might benefit. And I found this definition on Oregon.publiclaw. And this is that pertains to um, Latino, AX, and indigenous student success plan grant program definitions. Um, so they say Afro-Latino means an individual from Mexican, Central American, South American, or Caribbean communities who identify with African ancestry. <clears throat> so those Latinos who identify as Afro-Cuban, Afro-Puerto uh, Rican, or whatever the case may be, Afro-Latino, um, as well as individuals from Central America, South America, or the Caribbean so that includes Jamaica Trinidad Tobago the list goes on it also um, next we have the Central American 
uh, which means an individual of descent from Belize, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, or Panama, including black, Afro-Latino, and indigenous communities residing in those nations. Our community-based organization, again, this means a nonprofit, um, but specifically the definitions in one and two, Afro-Latino and Central American. So these are specific programs um, for individuals of a certain lineage and ancestry. So native blacks or American blacks would not be able to partake in this program, nor would uh, white people. But there was no outcry over this program. Um, but there was an outcry over the 62 uh, million dollars that was set aside for black businesses. Um, this should also be deemed as unconstitutional. Um, let's go on down to definition number eight, where they state indigenous means an individual from Mexican, Central American, South American or Caribbean communities who identify with indigenous or tribal communities from those geographic regions. So if you're from Mexico, if you're from somewhere in Central America, South America, or the Caribbean, if you identify with an indigenous or tribal community from uh, your homeland, um, then you would be considered indigenous and you could participate in this program. So again, um, a program specifically or for Latino and indigenous students um, was signed into law and implemented um, without any pushback from any other community um, that I can see. And this program's on the books today. You can check it out yourself. I just wanted to go back in and just briefly touch on that, um, considering um, the program in New York City, again, uh, which was specifically uh, set aside $10 million for Asian Americans. Um, we just got to keep calling these things um, into question and shedding light. Um, as the new independent black media, um, certain messages um, need to be amplified, um, you know, by a variety of content creators on YouTube and those who, um, you know, have other platforms as well. Instagram, Facebook, Patreon. Uh, we need to get on message uh, with certain uh, political themes as we seek uh, to force uh, the government to deal with uh our justice claims and a robust and effective black agenda moving forward um so yeah i'll keep doing my part um you all hop down in the comment section let me know what you think um should we begin to um sue these local governments who uh continue to formulate programs and legislate policy uh, for other groups specifically uh, but it seems as if black americans um, descendants of slavery uh, cannot effectively um, get any policy uh, which puts any resources in our pockets and in, into our communities. So we must sound the alarm and we must hold accountable um, those who will be uh, vying for our votes um, in 2022 and beyond. Um, and again, I'm going to do my part to um, call into question um, these instances um, that show a uh, continual historical and systemic um, institutional bias, uh, political bias against blacks. Um, I'll go so far as to call it an anti-black uh, political bias um, in America. Um, no state is uh, immune. Uh, the system as a whole is infected. So we have to take a look, you know, locally, uh, federally, at these programs that are targeting specific groups. And we have to demand that um, certain specific policies um, are tailor-made to our group. And as far as um, our group, we also uh, must focus on receiving uh, special designation um, as an endangered group um, within the United States. Uh, so yeah, that's my piece on this one. I'll be back on the other side. Hop down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Uh, don't forget to smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel. 
I'm the Shaman Online, build money. I'll see you on the other side.